On this week's show, a top 10 opponent visits Liberty Baseball and head coach Scott Jackson shares his favorite moment as skipper of the Flames. Plus, Lady Flames softball looks to stay hot and meet an LU student whose life is marked by service on and off the field. You're watching Flame Central. Sprung. Welcome into our Flame Central studios. I'm Emily. He's Matt. And while we're in studio, a majority of our great show today takes you outside to enjoy this beautiful weather. Yeah, we start on the diamond with Liberty Baseball. It's been a bit of an up and down season mm -hmm. for Liberty and non-conference play, but a different story altogether when it comes to the CUSA competition. Yeah, the Flames are fresh off a conference sweep over Sam Houston and overall hold a 5-1 and one record in CUSA play, but that doesn't mean LU is going to breeze by the tough talent in those midweek matchups. Wow, that was a tough Guess one. Guess what, time. Matt? Number nine, Duke in town. And did you catch this exchange before the game? Coach Jackson, don't bring Ben Miller with you. And Coach Pollard said, I have to. He's hitting 455. <laughs> Meet the Miller, who's having a historic season offensively for Duke. This one just fair down the third baseline. Cam Foster fumbles it. Duke leads early 2-0. LU responds in the third. Runner on second for Kane Kepley. Look, if you're not a Kane Kepley, fan by now. What's wrong with you? You should be. This kid is proof of where hard work and hustle can take you. Let's fast forward to the seventh. The Flames looking for life down six to three. Can the freshman provide it? McCann die with an RBI double to score Aiden Sweat. Duke still leading by two. And this time it's another freshman but in blue. AJ Gracia leaves the park for a three run shot and the number nine Blue Devils take it with a final nine to four. Well, when you watch a program like Liberty Baseball, you're mostly just aware of the athletes on the field. And that makes sense. They're the ones playing the game after all. But there are also so many people behind the scenes serving in ways we would never normally see. One of those people is student manager Zach Johnson, who takes serving seriously, whether on the diamond or the battlefield. That ball is hit high in the air to right and deep. And gone! Well, you want to light the fuse on a new season. That's Just getting to see what it's like for a student to wake up every day, go to classes, and then also go to practice. And I have to perform every single day for whatever game is coming up the next weekend. Um, getting to stand by that is amazing. Just getting to uh, sort of be behind the scenes and do what I can to support that. It's honestly a great opportunity that I've gotten to have. Pillars of our program are serve, grow, and compete. And obviously, Zach is familiar with serving with his background. An attitude of servanthood is at the core of who Zach Johnson is. And it shows itself both in his role as a baseball student manager and in his other role as a member of Liberty University's ROTC. It's following those Army Corps values, uh, showing honor, showing integrity, just being there for that selfless service. Even in times when I know that everything is rushed or there's a lot to do, just being willing to step up and be there for the team, be uh, there at a moment's notice. One of the great things about joining the Army is that your leadership is expected to manage talent. And every individual brings their talents, their gifts, their blessings to the table. Leadership is expected to be able to recognize those talents and put them where they're needed most. Cadet Johnson brings a lot of talent to the table. Similar to how the military operates in terms of its structure, our program is very structured and everybody has a role and no role is less important than any other from the players to the head coach to the managers. So just similar to the army where you're only as good as your enlisted men all the way up to your generals. So 
that's kind of how that blend applies to baseball. He brings that kind of willingness to do whatever it takes at all times. He's a great worker and he's very valuable to our program. And one of the reasons that Zach has thrived in these roles is that he doesn't see them as just a job. He has found purpose behind his calling. Part of that Army principle is being there for the team, being there for the mission. And I think that Liberty has an amazing mission, not just within university, but within sports. This is a, a big part of not just my life, but sports and the military as well to be ready to support the people beside you, to be able to perform well at a competitive level. We're there to help each other grow, not just spiritually, but also at the physical level. We encourage each other, and that's, that's God, that's Jesus. No matter the uniform, no matter the task, the goal for Zach remains the same. Point people to Christ through the way that he serves. God has led me to be a better person. Showing that loyalty, that honor that we have, not just for uh, the Army and for baseball, for the team, for whatever unit you may be in, but also just showing that for the community, the people around you. Thanks to Helmut Montoya for that piece. All right, we turn to Liberty Softball now. They dominated their series this past weekend. In a matchup of the top two teams in Conference USA, the Lady Flames not only swept Louisiana Tech, they didn't allow a single run. But could they stay hot on the road at number 13 Virginia Tech? To do so, the Lady Flames would have to dig themselves out of an early hole. Back-to-back -back home runs in the second inning would put the Hokies on top early, 3-0. But Liberty battled back. In the sixth, a Rachel Crane RBI single would score KK Madre, making it 3-2. Then later in the inning, the queen of clutch, Rachel Roop, smokes one off the wall in right center. That chased home both Maddie Tuck and Aubrey Norris, and suddenly Liberty was winning 4-3. But unfortunately, that would be short-lived. Two home runs for Virginia Tech in the bottom of the sixth would be the difference, and the Hokies hang on to take it 6-5. Let's head to the court. Liberty men's tennis is on a tear right now. The Flames started their Florida road trip with a victory over Florida Atlantic. In order to keep its five-match winning streak alive, Liberty would need to take down USF next, a team the Flames hadn't beat in their first three attempts. South Florida had the early advantage, but the Flames rattled off four consecutive match points to secure the win. Following the match, head coach Derek Schwant pointed out how Luis Felipe Miguel and Deji Thomas-Smith lost a tough double set, but then came out and competed like champions in singles. Thomas Smith went on to be named the CUSA Athlete of the Week. The number 55 Flames have now won six straight matches. And hey, the men aren't the only ones having success on the court. The Lady Flames apparently don't lose at home. <laughs> they beat Radford and Richmond for nothing, finishing their home spring season with a perfect 10-0 record. Not to mention the Lady Flames went unbeaten, perfect 5-0 against in-state programs this spring. All right, we step aside for a minute, but when we come back, meet a family who makes every day an adventure. Plus, Rhett McGibbon joins the show to share his Athletes of the Week. It's warm, hot, and fuego when Flame Central returns. Does education mean a room with four walls, a desk, 
in a PowerPoint lecture? Or is it something bigger? What if it's the people beside you, one chair away or one ocean away? What if it's the chance to learn from your mistakes, as well as your victories, and the push to keep going either way? What if it's the freedom to reach for bigger things without missing the little ones in between? For each of us, education looks a bit different. Because we're each a bit different. But at Liberty, we think education might just mean something big enough for all of us. That's Liberty to us. What will Liberty be to you? A college degree is more than a diploma. It's taking control of your future and finding that next step. At Liberty University, we not only care about your career, we also care about your calling. And we want to help you learn, develop, and grow so you can make an impact as a champion for Christ. Over 600 online programs, one you, infinite possibilities. At Liberty University, we understand life can be unpredictable. And when you need a resilient career, your education should withstand any test. So we've made sure the degree you need is within reach by freezing one of the lowest tuition rates in the nation for eight years and counting, and giving scholarships, discounts, and credit for work you've already done. Because we're proud of what you do. We've done this for over 30 years, and we know how to help. We're here to help you. Welcome back to Flame Central. With the weather warming up, it's a great opportunity to get outside and go on an adventure. Now, as you can see in this photo, the Stifter family is quite adventurous, but it doesn't have to be a big trip that breaks the bank, according to Liberty alumni, Dave and Jenny Stifter. They do micro adventures with their family to help them refocus on each other and their faith during a difficult season in life. It's almost as if God blew up our life all the realities that we were holding on to or thought we needed um, or were chasing. And he kind of blew all that up. And, and we thought um, it was a bad thing. And we thought it was a bad thing. And, um, and it just wasn't. I don't know how these paddles are going to work, Oak. Oak, are you going to paddle? You're going to use your paddle? We fell in love with the idea of micro-adventures. Everyone thinks you need like a week long. You, we save up our two weeks and we get all excited about our you know, two week vacations every year to kind of reset and recharge and, and, and get away. And we realized like we only, we need two hours. To their over 100,000 Instagram followers, Dave and Jenny Stifter, along with their two children, Oakley and Callie, are known as the Micro Adventure family. Living in Jacksonville, Florida, their daily escapes inspire others to get out and explore. We just thought that there might be some value there to, to encouraging people to get outside in their own backyard. Even when you're tired and even when you don't feel like getting outside. Our goal was to really hit the ground running with our careers and to build up as much as a, of a savings account that we could. So that way when it came time to have kids that we would kind of be all in in the parenting realm. The day we had Oakley, one of my business partners walked into the hospital on the same day with this, you know, we had started a healthcare business. Um, and one of my partners had walked in kind of with a, um, you know, we got served paperwork for a big lawsuit, got blindsided by this, by this thing, nothing we had done um, yeah. wrong, but just things happen in business. And so um, mm -hmm. literally it all hit at the same time. There was like months of like this ongoing back and forth of like, what is this gonna look like? Um, and just a lot of complicated ins and outs. We realized that we owed somewhere to the tune of a million dollars personally. And it was devastating. And then amidst their hardship, Jenny became pregnant with their second child. You get on that sort of that high of thinking like, yes, we're, we're gonna be expecting another baby. This is so exciting. Mm -hmm. And then quickly realized that, um, that the baby was no longer viable. So um, 
that was hard. That was really hard because then it was just more questions of like, why God? It's as if things all happened all at once. It was so much that it didn't matter what I wanted to hold on to. I couldn't, I couldn't be that good husband during that period. I couldn't be that good dad even. I couldn't hold it together in any area of my life. I remember sitting at that we had a little bar counter in our house and I just remember sitting there so many times and just reading scripture and praying and sobbing. I just remember sobbing. I think sometimes we always just want to think like, you know, all I need is Jesus. But like in that moment, all we had was Jesus. Trying to heal from the loss of their child and still facing staggering debt, Dave and Jenny search for a way out. We had been sorting through a lot of this legal stuff and we realized one of the only ways that we could have tried to figure out how we could make even more of a dent into this debt is to sell our house. So we listed the house and I was seven months pregnant and a week later Hurricane Matthew came through Jacksonville, hit our house, flooded it, destroyed it. After renovations to their flood damaged home, Dave and Jenny relisted it and then determined it was time for a change. We decided we were like, let's just pack up and leave, leave our house staged and furnished, ready to go, and let's just go to Boulder because we just feel like for whatever reason, we're, you know, God's just kind of guiding us out of Jacksonville at this moment. So we packed our bags and put them in the back of Dave's truck. Didn't bring any furniture, anything with us. And as soon as we started our drive across country, we got a full asking price offer on our house, which was shocking. Crazy so shocking that our realtor called the other realtor and said, what's the catch? When we moved from Jacksonville, it became kind of this sweet period of our lives where, you know, that we found rest for a second. We found rest in another really sweet church community that just loved us so well, even though we couldn't figure anything out. But in time, they would begin to feel a call to adventure. After living in Colorado for six months, we decide to go buy an RV and to go travel all 50 states in this RV. Their travels would bring discovery and inspiration. I think there's a sense in which horizontal awe can always stimulate vertical awe. And so I think that definitely happened on our journey as we traveled and saw, you know, the amount of national parks and places we went to that are just jaw dropping. It was super refreshing and great for the heart and our souls to, to be reminded of who painted that picture for us. And along the way, another burden was lifted. I don't think that there was ever even the thought in our head of we are going to escape this debt. I think that we <laughs> thought that we would have it for the rest of our lives. Throwing money back into this and completely mm. by God's grace, I literally could not even begin to tell you, but that the debt has been completely paid. And it was just something that we never thought that we would see. We never thought we would see that day. A blessing they would begin to pass on to others. As they rolled through each state on their journey, they found opportunities to serve and use their social media platform to give back. For us, even from the start of starting the social media side of things and documenting our journey, we, we just kind of said, you know, let's, how can we make this kind of a community in which no one feels like we're trying to get anything out of it? Let's travel, let's try to find as many ways that we can um, kind of dive in and help along the way um, and get involved in things along our journey. But also when it comes to Instagram, you know, social media, YouTube, like any money we make, any, anything like that, let's, let's just give it all away. And by focusing on others, Dave and Jenny have experienced a strengthening of their own faith and a renewed focus on the one above. We're not always serving well and we're not always missional minded. Um, and on most days, Oakley and Callie's dad <laughs> isn't even close to that, right? And so I think what we've been focusing on a lot recently, alongside of trying to be, you know, a good example to them, is, is also reminding our kids often that their parents are messing up and didn't serve well today, and pointing to the one who perfectly served us today. Mm -hmm and perfectly loved us today. With their 50 state tour complete, Dave, Jenny, and their two kids have settled back home in Florida. And while they're no longer traveling the open roads, one thing is certain, their next adventure is right around the corner. I don't think the micro adventures will ever end for us and still gives us a lot of that sense of adventure on a day-to-day, -day, even if we're 
in one place. Ah, it just makes you want to load the kids up, go out and take yeah, an adventure, doesn't it, Rhett? Sure. Rhett McGiven here, Dang. as always. That means warm, hot, and fuego. Top play, player moment from the past week in Liberty Athletics. Rhett, what do we got this week? All right, I'm going warm here. I thought of some vocabulary. Oh. I was actually giving a vocab quiz to my son oh, earlier. Really? So I was kind of thinking, oh, this be a, it'd be a good idea. weapon, yeah. you know, yeah. for the younger age groups. That's right. Courage is the word. Courage, Madeline okay. Clunder is the player, defensive player in all a son women's lacrosse here this yeah. past week. And you think about the courage, when you're going in for ground balls, right. this is just a ground ball magnet right here. You got your head buried, both hands down, no protection. You gotta be thinking, oh my goodness, I'm either gonna get whacked or bumped <laughs> shoulder to shoulder here. Yeah. Take it, you know, it's gonna be some some venom coming yeah. my way in some form or fashion. But this young lady uh, led Liberty with 30 ground balls so far this season, 32 in the country, number three in the A-Sun with 2.73 ground balls per game, also number 20 in the nation when it comes to cause turnover. So okay. she is a big part. Yeah. You know, this Liberty team is all focused on just causing turn turnovers and havoc in the defensive zone, and she's a big part of that. So hopefully some more success coming yeah. their way, a big win here recently, but defensive play a big part of it. I think they're about to get hot in conference yes. play. All right, from warm, we go too hot. Yeah, Nick Moran, this yes. guy had composure oh. as the word, because any time yeah. that you have three runs against, but they're unearned. Yeah, that's gonna test you a little right. bit, right? You're gonna be like, oh man, I'm pitching well here. Help me on out, the boys. Mound. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. going on back there behind me? But he comes through, went seven strong innings, struck out seven, no walks. We talked about those three runs, but all unearned. And it finished the sweep over Sam Houston, a big sweep yeah. for LU. Because if you go that weekend, I think if you drop the last one, all of a sudden you're thinking, man, so close to doing yeah. something special. He manages to come through a big win for that team, a big sweep, because just the amount of flux that's been through that team so far this season, you needed something like this, yeah. I feel like, to jet you forward. So big win. Yeah. And getting depth out of a, a pitcher, yes. right? Pitching's been a little for up sure. and down as well. Big Seven strong start. innings, that's huge yeah. for Liberty. All yeah. right, finally, Rhett and Fuego, top player this week is All here. right, it's tenacity, and that is oh. Kaylin Yoder. It oh, is written yes. all yes. over her face. You saw it earlier on that picture behind you. Kaylin Yoder, when she gets in the zone, she is just so much fun to watch. Okay, two dubs against LA Tech. Again, LA Tech tied with Liberty for top spot in the conference coming into this weekend series. She goes through. She has two shutouts in the weekend series. First freshman to ever do this. Unbelievable. Yeah, and you she's think got the eye of the tiger. Right? She I'm really say it right does. now. Oh. Eye of the tiger. She's just came people up. I was watching her. She walked somebody in the yeah. top of the seventh. I was like, I'm not worried at all. No, she's going to come back. She's got that dog in her. She's going <laughs> to came up. She yeah. did exactly that. Kaylin Yoder uh. is something special. She's going to be fun to watch. You're glad that Liberty has her for three more years. What a bright future yes. for her and present as well yeah. as she is been fantastic <laughs> yeah, for sure. this year. Right, yeah. Great job Thank as you. always. Still to come, there were some big moments in the eight seasons Scott Jackson has led the Liberty baseball program. But which one is his favorite? Yeah. Well, we'll tell you when Flame Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books, and an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top-ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help you get ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day. Your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. Being a parent and helping your kids through school, it's not exactly easy. I mean, there's waking up at 5 a.m., the morning routine, helping with homework, sitting in traffic. You get it. What if there was a way you could get your kids a quality Christian education where they can work at any pace, any time, from anywhere? School that works for your schedule and frees your kids to keep doing what they love. Well, that's exactly what we do. LUOA, school that goes where you do.
welcome back to the show. This year, Liberty Baseball is seeking its first Conference USA title in its first year in the league. Mm -hmm. But winning a conference championship isn't new to this program. Yeah, remember LU Baseball won the A-Sun Championship back in 2019, which was the Flames' first year in the A-Sun Conference. And that just happens to be Skipper Scott Jackson's favorite moment at Liberty. My name is Scott Jackson. I'm the head baseball coach here at Liberty. My favorite moment in a Liberty uniform is winning the 2019 A-Sun Championship in Deland, Florida. 27th out is always the hardest to get. We had to beat Stetson twice to win the conference tournament. Here comes Evans' attempt on 2-2. Ground ball to second. Wagner's got it. Throw to first. Flames win it! The start of that season, I think, really kind of maybe give me a hint of, hey, we got a special group, but we got in the loser's bracket, and I think when you have a team like that that is that good and they know what's at stake, you really don't have to say much to, and you just give yourself a chance to be positive with them. Day three of the A-Sun Baseball Championships would end up going 12 innings, and Liberty continues their season as the Flames live on. You know, remind them how good we are. We're here for a reason, and let's do this one game at a time, and that's exactly what they did. The Flames go on to victory, and they will play the defending champion Stetson Hatters in their home ballpark. We had Andrew McInvale on the mound. The second time in the A-Sun Tournament, it is Andrew McInvale, 9-2 and two record, 91 innings this year. He's a horse. We knew if we were going to win that game, it was going to be McInvale and Brabrand, but McInvale had to get us deep into the game because when you come through that loser's bracket, we just didn't have many guys available. And he underhand flips the first. Andrew McInvale with six scoreless innings. Everything that had to go our way went our way. McInvale pitched through the sixth, into the seventh, and then Braybrand the last three, exactly how you would script it. Braybrand's one, two. Breaking ball, run him up. Fogo goes down looking. It was exactly the type of game that we needed and that we were used to winning that, that year. But I do remember that last out. Wagner has it, throw to first, ball game over. The Liberty Flames, the two seed in their first year in the A-Sun Conference, have won the A-Sun Championship. Just the elation that you see for the players. And then really, it's my moment here because of watching those kids celebrate that and see how happy they were. But then my family was on the field with me. So, you know, to have a baseball field be such a big part of our lives and then to be able to celebrate like that with your family on the field, it's, it's pretty cool. Liberty heads to the NCAA Tournament. Ah, uh, such a great memory and some serious dudes oh, on yeah. that team. All right, listen, we're about out of time. As always, LibertyFlamesCentral.com for any stories you might have missed. Brand new website. We're going to keep saying that for a while. Check it out. Don't forget, Flame Central Podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. It's good stuff. Download and subscribe. For Matt, I'm Emily. We'll see you next week.